The emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere is considered one of the main causes of the greenhouse effect, which has been related to many environmental problems. It becomes important to reduce the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but can we remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? Are there viable technologies that could be used for this purpose? This is what you will see in this video. Humans have been responsible for emitting more than 2,000 gigatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. The emission of these gases is considered to be the cause of global warming which can cause numerous problems, such as rising sea levels and flooding of coastal cities, an increase in the number of devastating hurricanes, suffocating heat waves, forest fires, and the desertification of fertile areas. Therefore, it is necessary to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Among the necessary measures, one can cite stopping deforestation, increase in the use of renewable energy, and seeking to increase energy efficiency. For the temperature on the planet to increase by only 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius, the limit cited by scientists to keep climate impacts at lower levels, it is necessary to reduce emissions and also remove and store carbon from the atmosphere. The first alternative for carbon dioxide removal is the use of forests. Trees are important for the removal and storage of carbon from the atmosphere. Expansion and restoration of forests could increase carbon uptake through photosynthesis. This option also favors the production of cleaner water and air. In this method, carbon dioxide will be removed and originate glucose and oxygen through photosynthesis. Before continuing, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way we can continue to make videos for you. A second alternative for removing carbon dioxide from the air is direct carbon capture. In this case, the process consists of chemically purging carbon dioxide from the air and storage in long-lived products or underground. But it is an expensive technology and the energy consumption is high. In this process fans suck air, and the air passes through a solid absorbent filter. Carbon dioxide is retained in the filter, and the filter is heated and releases carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is mixed with water and injected deep into the ground. There will be a reaction of the carbonated water with the basaltic rock, forming carbonate minerals. While the removal of carbon dioxide from forests should cost less than $50 per metric ton, Direct capture from the air would cost between $94 and $232 per metric ton. In addition, this method has a demand for heat and energy and it would be necessary to use energy sources of low or zero carbon for the net removal of carbon to occur. But this technology is new and needs public support. A third option is to use minerals that react with carbon dioxide, which will be transformed into a solid. This process is called, weathering, and, although it is a slow process, takes hundreds or thousands of years. Ways are being discovered to speed up the process, especially with the increasing exposure of minerals to carbon dioxide. Some options to increase this exposure would be to pump alkaline water from the subsoil to the surface, favoring the reaction of minerals with the air, carry out air movement through mining waste deposits that contain a suitable mineral composition, inject carbon dioxide into specific rocks, where it could react to form a solid carbonate. In the enhanced weathering method, one possibility is to use olivine, a nesosilicate. In this method, the mineral would be crushed, spread over agricultural areas, and react with atmospheric carbon dioxide. After the reaction, the formation of solid carbonates would occur. From the soil, the material would be transported to rivers and reach the ocean, where it would be stored. Another option is carbon dioxide removal across the ocean. This method seeks to use strategies to increase the ocean's capacity to store carbon dioxide, but more research is needed to assess possible ecological, governance, and social impacts. Photosynthesis from algae, coastal plants, or phytoplankton could be harnessed to remove carbon dioxide. Some types of minerals could be added to increase the storage of dissolved bicarbonate. There is also the possibility of using an electric current in seawater. Coastal cultivation of seaweed could be advantageous as, in addition to removing carbon, it could help to restore the ecosystem, while the addition of minerals could help to store carbon and reduce its acidification, but it is still necessary to assess the ecological impacts of these methods. 
the cultivated algae could still be used for food, fertilizer, and fuel contributing to the reduction of emissions compared to traditional production processes. The use of several approaches together for carbon removal would be an alternative with less risk. In addition to the use of carbon dioxide removal methods, it is important to reduce emissions through the use of clean technologies. If you would like to know more about the emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and clean technologies, check out the videos on the channel. The link is in the video description. Leave a comment if you would like to know more about the technologies for carbon dioxide removal. If you liked the video, leave your like and don't forget to subscribe. That way we can continue to make videos for you.